On Tuesday, January 21, the U.S. learned that it has a new virus on its shores. Researchers in Washington state identified the first U.S. case of what is being called the Wuhan virus, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC. Chinese researchers first identified the virus in December in the Chinese city of Wuhan, where they suspect people contracted the virus from animals at a market. About 300 people in six countries have now been diagnosed with the virus, and 17 people have died. But let's take it back a step. How do doctors know their patients are combating a virus that's new to medicine? The first indicator is if all typical tests fail, says Kelly Robleski, the Director of Infectious Disease at the Association of Public Health Laboratories, APHL. Doctors collect a bunch of samples from a sick patient, then send them to a public health lab to figure out what is making them sick. A range of tests, or assays, can identify existing viruses based on their shape, genes or the antibody response they elicit. If none of those tests turn up positive, the first thing researchers do is create many copies of the virus by depositing it onto a layer of cells where it can replicate. This can be dangerous if the virus is highly infectious, so it can only be done in certain labs that are able to contain the virus and protect the researchers that work there. Then, lab technicians use genetic sleuthing to narrow down what it might be. Viruses are very small, about 1-1. One hundredth the size of bacteria, so looking at them through a microscope isn't much help. The lab techs also sequence the new virus entire genetic code so that public health workers can upload it to one of several international public health databases. Chinese researchers uploaded the code for the Wuhan virus to GenBank run by the U.S. National Institutes of Health and an influenza, specific one called the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data GISAID. According to the CDC, all this happens astoundingly quickly. The sequencing process, for example, can take as little as 48 to 72 hours, Robleski says.